Hi, so uh, before I begin today's video, I am going to give a shout out to a black booktuber. And today's shout out is to the Celebro Hedonists. Um, they have only 152 subscribers. I think they should have a lot more simply uh, for their voice and amazing voice for um, for media, which is just great. Um, they did a great uh, essay for the cancel -thon, video essay for the cancel -thon, which I thought was great, entitled The Diminishing Human Element. Um, discussing cancel culture and the diminishing human element in that when talking about books. And so I think that you all should uh, go check that out, whether you agree or disagree. I think we can all uh, enjoy their content. So um, definitely check out, out the Sleepy Head in this content. And I will post links to their social media and um, channel down in the description box below. Hi, my name is Justin, aka Ghost Reader. And today um, I am going to be doing a video about lynching of African Americans in the United States. Uh, this is part of my topics and black history video. So every week, every weekday in February, I will be posting a video about a topic in black history. So this topic was inspired by the short story uh, in the book, uh, great short stories by African Americans uh, called Jesus Christ in Texas, which was written by W.E.D. Du Bois. Now W.E.D. The boy was a uh, civil rights activist. He was head of the NAACP and also a editor for his paper, The Crisis, and has written uh, books about um, African-American experience uh, in the United States. So I definitely go check out his work um, if you haven't uh, already. I definitely want to read more of, of, of his stuff going forward because I know of him and about what he did, but not having really read a lot of his works. This is actually, I think, the second one that I've read. I think I've Tempted to read The Souls of Black Folk, definitely go back and finish reading that. But this is the first work that I completed. This is a short story about an African American who's about to be lynched when his place is taken by a person who um, you then find out is basically Jesus. And this story basically goes to show the evilness of lynching. So, of course, since I'm talking about lynching, I'm not going to go into anything like graphic uh, in this video but if this is a topic that you are sensitive to i suggest that you don't watch the, this video but i'm talking about lynching because one it, it was uh, something that african americans dealt with in the past uh, was a reality for them and i think it's also a topic that needs to be talked about today because the injustice um that they faced then is still we still face similar injustice here in the united states today so according to the equal justice initiative report that was published in 2015 more than 4,000 African Americans were lynched between the years of 1877 and 1950. They use 1877 as their starting point because that was the year of the Tilden Hayes Compromise. Without getting into too much detail, basically, uh, this compromise uh, basically withdrew the last of federal troops that were stationed in the South. This then allowed the uh, Southern states to basically ignore all the progress that was made during reconstruction and impose jim crow on african americans basically putting them in a place in which they were second class citizens with federal troops gone this left uh, african americans unprotected and open to racial violence that began to occur uh, all over the south but not just in the south but also in the north as well of the cases looked at by the equal uh, justice initiative report 4084 happened in uh, 12 southern states while 300 uh, of them happened in other states in the United States. Now, in these lynching uh, incidents, about 30% of them, the said cause of it was that the person uh, being lynched was being lynched for homicide. And in 25% of these cases, it was said that the person was to be lynched for sexual assault. However, no matter what the reason was for uh, the lynching, the lynchings did not follow the law. The person was not given due process. So uh, even if they were given due process, which means they actually were taken to like trial and put on trial, a group or a mob of people were basically going into a jail and dragging that person out and then executing them, which does not follow the rule of law at all. Sometimes these were spontaneous happenings. So a group of men would just get together, run down to the jail, grab the person or lynch them, or they may not even be at the jail. Perhaps they were just walking down the street at the wrong place in time. Perhaps uh, something happened and the white person blows it out of proportion. And then a group of men would go and grab them and, and lynch them. Sometimes these things were actually planned. So they would send out flyers saying, we're going to lynch this person and people will come in from uh, different states, different counties for, for the event. And these events, of course, were terrible. People died 
in horrible ways and then afterwards people will, will take souvenirs from the people they killed or and or pictures there are even postcards that have pictures on them that were like sent to like family and friends saying like i am great i was at this at this lynching and I had a lot of fun now of all the people involved in these lynchings only one percent one percent were ever charged uh in in any of these cases uh, and of that 1%, not all of them even faced, uh, you were actually, you know, punished for the crime or received, like, you know, just punishment for what they did. Uh, this is because sometimes law enforcement officers were sympathetic, local government wasn't willing to enforce the law. And because these are mobs of people, no one would talk. If some, even if an officer wanted to, like, go ahead and actually pursue justice, he couldn't because no one was going to give up anybody else. That's why black newspapers and black civil rights activists began pushing for a federal anti-lynching law because on the local level there really wasn't any enforcement of the law or any any um, interest in passing anti-lynching laws at the local level however if they could get it to be a federal crime then the federal government will have to step in and enforce the law however from 1919 till the present the 200 anti-lynching laws uh, were presented to congress and none of them became law it actually wasn't until 2005 that the Senate actually apologized for not making uh, anti-lynching legislation, legislation a priority. Now, while all this was going on, African Americans were not silent. They were speaking out in the newspapers. Activists were going around trying to get support for anti-lynching laws. Ida B. Wells traveled the country going around to many inc incidences of lynchings and reporting on what happened. Walter White, who eventually ended up being uh, the head of the NAACP, uh, could actually pass for White. So he was able to go to a lot of these uh, lynching places and invest and actually get more information than say like a black reporter would because he would probably get ran out of town, town or lynched himself. Uh, there's actually even a story that while he was investigating, Walter White was actually deputized as someone to, um, to join um, in trying to lynch someone else. And unfortunately, a very sad statistic is that it wasn't until 1952, since uh, official records have been kept, it wasn't until 1952 that there was a year without any lynchings at all. Now, one good thing that's happened, that was in 2015, finally, uh, lynching was made a federal hate crime uh, with a bill that was sponsored by Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and Tim Scott. To honor those who uh, had died from racial injustice and in, in lynchings, um, in Montgomery, Alabama, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice was established in 2015. And you can go there and you can see this memorial that is made for those who died basically as victims of white supremacy. Unfortunately, that this is a dark part of American history, but it's not something that needs to be overlooked. We need to talk about it. We need to confront it as a nation. One, so that we remember what has been done in the past and remember the sacrifices that some of these people made because some of, of them uh, were actually were lynched because they spoke out against injustice in their communities or happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And no one deserves that. And also we need to talk about it so that these things don't happen in the future because some of these injustices, injustices are still happening now. While we may not go out and see crowds of people stringing um, African Americans up, there are still instances of African Americans dying from racial injustice in the United States. So uh, this is something that we need to talk about, something that we need to like I said, confront, not bury, because once you bury and forget things, you're bound to repeat the same mistakes. So that is it for uh, this video. Let me know what you think about this video down in the comment section uh, below. Um, if you uh, like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to uh, see more videos from me, please subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at GhostReads28, on Instagram at JustinTheGhostReader, and on uh, Goodreads. The link to that is down in the uh, description box below. So as always, Keep reading.